Welcome to this video about creating a 3D component in Blazor WebAssembly. The shown project will only work with the WebAssembly hosting model because if you would choose the server one, all of the user's interaction would need to be sent to the server or the WebSockets connection and then also received uh, over the same way and the overhead would just be too big. Because we are going to use our own styling here in the index.html page, I'm just going to delete the references to the bootstrap a file and to our, our pre-built CSS that Microsoft delivers with every template. And here I'm just saying display none, otherwise the error window would pop out without any reason. Now we are making all of our changes here in the main layout, Razor component. Again, delete everything. Because we are going to use a timer afterwards, I'm just going to import the namespace now. Now here I'm making the styling. So I will give the body a margin of zero because we don't want to see the scroll bars, height 100 VH. Now the background will be a linear gradient, 90 degree, meaning from the left side to the right side, and a linear gradient is basically two colors mixing in each other. And then I'm saying display grid, justify content, which is the horizontal alignment center and align content, the vertical uh, alignment also center, and then I give it a perspective of a thousand pixels. Otherwise, we won't see the 3D effect. Now, here, the main element, which is going to be our 3D component, give it a border radius of 10 pixels. We will build the whole thing in a glass morphism styling theme. Glass morphism is a trend in which you know, the designers are trying to em emulate uh, glass that is layered on top of each other. So I just hard code the height and the width so it's not responsive the whole thing. Now background color here I'm making a white background but I make it transparent by using the RGBA and here just setting 0.4 which is like 40% of opacity. Then I'm setting the border to one pixel solid white again this is trying to emulate a class. I style the cursor as a pointer so that the user is a bit, that they know that they can uh, use the 3D feature. Now transform rotate Y and rotate X will be zero degree. And rotate Y zero degree. And then the transition is 0 0.4 seconds. So whenever the property changes, it takes 0 0.4 seconds for the new value to be displayed. Now here I'm going to add the main element. Here I'm going to define, or I'm going to subscribe to three event handlers. The first one is on pointer move. Second one is on pointer over. And the last one is on pointer out. Now I have to define a method. Of course, I do this in the code block. Method is not going to return anything. And I call it change. The first parameter will be of type pointer event arc, second one of type string. Now here we are going to use the switch expression that C sharp 8 delivered us. And of course, because it's an expression, we have to we are generating a value and we have to like store this value somewhere. So therefore we are using this CSS field and I'm going to use, add it here over the one way binding. So, so up here we have the values that we are going to pattern match against. First value would be method. Second value would be animate. Now animate again is a field of type boolean and it's just going to indicate us how we should uh, deal with the transition. I know everything is a bit abstract now but I'm sure it will become clear afterwards. So here I'm defining our patterns. If method equals out and animate we don't care so we are using here this default uh, literal. Then we are going to return of course a string. Now for this we are going to build a little helper method that is returning a string, we call it transform to CSS, takes in the x-coordinates and the y-coordinates, and we are just returning 
by using the string interpolation feature transform rotate y and rotate x so that's that now here we are calling the transform to css with zero and zero meaning we are going to reset it so when the user is moving out of the 3d element we are just going to reset it to its initial styling and then again we are going to override the transition of 0 0.4 seconds to one second so that the whole thing is a bit smoother so it takes one second to go into this position here now i'm going going to define another helper method which is going to return a number call it get degree takes in also a number type double and the dimension now of course there are countless ways how you would do it i'm again using the switch expression and then here i'm going to define our pattern as if dimension is y then i'm going to return math clamp now here that's the hard-coded thing uh, if you want to have everything responsive you would need javascript for, to get or to calculate the height and the width of the element now uh, why am i using 10 here that's just uh, a value that i chosen meaning the degree if i would set a higher number than 10 then the whole animation would be a bit more uh, bit more visible but i think 10 degree is quite okay now 250 because the height of the element is 500 pixels here the width of the element is a thousand pixels so i'm setting it to 500 and then here i'm uh, yeah, dividing it by 500 now what does math clamp do math clamp looks at this value here if this value is smaller than 10 it takes 10 if this value that i've highlighted here is bigger than 10 then it takes 10. and over this thing here we are just going to define uh, the yeah the change uh, in relation to the to the to the center of the whole element so now we have to define our other patterns just copy this so here we are taking the in then we are saying transform to css now you're using get degree arguments offset x and pass in here x and then of course we need to do it a second time offset y and here pass in y Now here we are finally using animate. Oh, I'm using it wrong. I uh, use here the constant pattern with true. So if you are, if you can animate, I'm setting the transition to zero seconds, which means everything will be way faster. We don't have to wait a 0 0.4 seconds for everything to be finally in its uh, desired state. Now here again, I am using the transform method. So I'm ju I just can copy it in here. Here I'm using the false one, and when we can't animate it, I'm just going to uh, delete the transition so that we have a transition of 0 0.4 seconds as specified. Now you're also going to use a default pattern, so if nothing matches, if no pattern is found that matches, we are just going to return the 0, 0 position. So now somewhere we have to set the whole animate thing. This is going to happen in our initialized lifetime method in here we are going to first of all i have to declare the timer do it as a field 
and then in here I'm going to initialize it using the constructor and pass in the uh, the time I want the interval to be in milliseconds. So the timer will uh, fire every 350 milliseconds. Now I'm setting, I'm subscribing to the elapsed event here. We will get, uh, we have to define a method that has the first parameter of object, second one of elapsed events, something I think, just call it arcs. And then in here we are just setting animate equals to true. And just that I don't forget, we also want to start with animate equals to true. So, and then on the timer, I also set auto reset to false. If we would have auto reset to true, it will fire our, after every 350 seconds. Now with this, we have to um, manually start it again. So uh, here the equals. So, okay. Great. So now, of course, up here we have to actually assign something to these event handlers. Now P will stand for the pointer event arcs. And then here I call change. First pass in P and then pass in the name of our method, in this case move. Now you may ask yourself, like, why did I use Oh, okay, so why did I move, uh, why did I use this sign here that I don't know the English name? Because if you would use a default thing, like the ones you see here, we can't pass a string. Somehow, uh, yeah, it doesn't work, so we have to use it this way. So ask P, and then the lambda thing, okay. so move over and uh, no I have called it in so yeah one pointer over is equals to one pointer in when it first uh, hovers over and here on pointer out I have called it out so and then here on pointer over we are using a statement lambda so I'm setting animate to false and then I'm stopping the timer and then start it. Now, uh, why, I'm, why am I doing this? Because when the user first hovers over the element, I want to have 350 milliseconds in which we have a transition of 0 0.4 seconds so that it doesn't look too, uh, too hardcore because if I wouldn't have it, if I would have a transition of just uh, yeah, zero seconds, it would be very, it would look this great. So I have to do it here. And then the goal is that when the user has stayed over the element for 350 seconds, animate will be true. And then from there on, we will, uh, we don't have the transition. So it's just to make it look a bit better. So let's have a look. Okay. I just realized I have forgotten something. Just quickly change it here. Here I have to set a minus. So that's of course, uh, you can do whatever you want here with the styling. But I think if I set a minus, it looks a bit better. So. Okay, we see here our little glass morphism styling. I hover over it and uh, I ho hope that you, you see the, the whole animation. Now, if I hover over it now, okay, that's the exact thing that shouldn't happen. Here, we should have a transition of 0 0.4 seconds. And I'm just wondering why, but that's actually great because now you see the thing that I don't want is like this abrupt spiking here I want to uh, have it a bit more smooth. So where does our problem lay? Okay, I found it. Here I have transform and it is called transition. Now it should work. Okay, I come over. Now you see the transition. 
So it isn't that abrupt. Now the 350 milliseconds have passed and everything uh, yeah, works 